Hi, painting peeps, and welcome to the No Brown Zone. I don't know if this is going to show up backwards or not, but my daughter made that for me, and uh, it's one of my prized possessions. We are here today to talk about varnish. We're here today to talk about isolation coat. We're here to talk about how I varnish. Um, there's a video, oh, about a year back where I did a varnishing uh, tutorial, but everyone uh, is reaching out. How do you do it? And I think a lot of peeps don't know that you can scroll down through my YouTube page and uh, find videos that are, um, well, about two years old. I started my first video, I think about two years ago with the help of Heather Mater, who who did my first one and then after a lot of work and exploring on uh, tutorials of iMovie I eventually learned how to do them myself and I enjoy doing my videos it's just a whole nother creative process for me so anyways I have two canvases here and in a minute I'm going to raise the tripod up so you can see it a little bit better but I wanted to talk about a few things first um, isolation coat um, I think that this is the most important part of varnishing. Now, if you want to read all about it, go to the source, go to the Golden website. I will post a link in the description box below. But an isolation coat is a clear, glossy bar barrier applied on top of acrylics before varnish. Now, this does several things for me. Um, number one, it protects the paint below. So if you happen to screw your varnish up, you can remove it without disturbing the paint below. Now, that's a whole nother process in itself. What you gotta do is you gotta get mineral spirits, you gotta soak lint-free rags in it, you gotta lay it um, on top of your painting for four to six minutes, pull it off, wipe, do it again, do it again, do it again. But if you have a beautiful piece of art, um, it's well worth the effort, but it's a pain in the butt to do it. Go to the source, go to the Golden website. It will tell you how to remove varnish from your paintings. Um, Golden Isolation Coat, it protects the paint below. It also gives you a smooth surface to apply your varnish and it keeps because you have a coat down of an isolation coat on top of your painting, <clears throat> excuse me, pollen season down south, guys, it's no fun for this girl. But once you put your isolation coat down, um, it prevents the canvas from soaking in too much varnish. And I just find that my varnish um, applies nice and smoothly. Isolation coat, guys. Go to the Golden website. Go to the source. Read all about it. Now, varnishes. How many and so many varnishes are out there? I'm a Liquitex girl. I'm a Liquitex girl because it has done right by me almost every single time. And I'm also not a shiny girl, but some of my clients are. So, Generally, what I do is after the isolation coat goes down, I wait 24 hours. I apply the isolation coat with an inexpensive um, brush. The less expensive it is, the better it is for me. Um, and a synthetic fiber brush. Another thing that's important about your brush is you do not want a heavy duty thick brush. It tends to absorb too much of the varnish that you put down on your canvas. And uh, you don't want that. A very, very thin brush, a synthetic brush, a cheap brush. These were about a buck 99. I used them three or four times and then I toss them. So none of these fancy expensive brushes for this girl. It what work, It's what works for me. I do not use a sponge brush. A lot of people do. If it works for you, fantastic. I find that um, spreading the varnish with a sponge brush tends to create a lot of air bubbles. Air bubbles are something that we don't want in our varnished paintings. Um, 
something more about the isolation coat. If you go through that process and you put it down, do not freak out because when you do put it down, it's going to leave a um, milky appearance to your painting. Don't freak out. Walk away from it, put a cover over it, check it in a couple of hours and you can see that uh, that opaqueness goes away. Did I say that right? Opaqueness? Is that actually a word? Is it like thicker? <laughs> I don't know. Isolation coat goes down. I wait 24 hours and then I clean my canvas off. How do I clean my canvas off? I use baby wipes. These canvases have both been clean. I wipe them down with a baby wipe. I go in with a dust-free fiber cloth. I wipe it down. I check for any dust or debris. I turn off any fans in the room or anything that's going on to help create air movement. And then I walk away for, from it for about 10 minutes until it's totally dry. Isolation coat goes down 24 hours later. I wipe it down again to make sure there's no dust or debris. And I start my varnishing process now. I'm not a shiny girl. I prefer a satin finish on my paintings. But satin finish has a matting agent in it. So if you want to apply a couple of coats of varnish, which is what this girl always does after her isolation coat, my isolation coat goes down. Then I use my high gloss or my gloss Liquitex varnish. I apply that next. I wait 24 hours. I come in and I apply another coat of the high gloss varnish. I wait 24 hours. Then I come in and I apply my final coat of satin varnish. If you do more than one or two coats of satin varnish, the matting agent in this varnish is going to mat the colors below. If you want a matte finish, then by all means use it. But very important, you start off with a gloss or a high gloss varnish before you put your satin varnish down. What else? 24 hours between each coat? I think that if you Google it, you only have to wait six to eight. I wait 24 hours. How long before I varnish my paintings? It all depends on the climate, the temperature in the room, the amount of paint on the canvas. Some do it three to four days later. My paintings sit for at least seven to 10 days before I put my isolation coat down and my varnish. Um, it takes a while for the paint below. The Top of the painting might seem totally dry to you, but remember there are layers of paint below that. So it does take a good amount of time. So what are we doing here today? Well, I'm going to show you. This painting right here has already got its isolation coat down on it. You can see that it's a little bit dull. I put the isolation coat down yesterday. This painting right here, you can see the gloss that's in there. That's already got a couple of coats of um, gloss varnish down. Now this customer ordered another piece from me. Let me show that to you. You can see the gloss in that. It almost has a resin-like finish, but this customer also ordered this painting from me. Let me put that back. So I decided to finish this in the same gloss varnish that that painting is finished in. So this has already got its isolation coat. This has got one coat of high gloss varnish. We're getting ready to add a second coat of high gloss varnish. This painting right here has its isolation coat. Next, we're gonna add its first coat of um, high gloss varnish. This customer as well likes a glossy finish. Now, 
I prefer varnish over resin because I'm not a shiny girl. I think that resin sometimes grabs a little bit too much light. Um, I'm just not a shiny girl, but I'll show you a resin piece for comparison. This piece right here has been resin and it's beautiful, but see how it catches. You can see my fan above and the light. See how it catches all the light in the room. I find that to be a little bit distracting, but this customer <laughs> wanted a resin finish. So ask and you shall receive, guys. It's your art. So what else? Let me see if I have something with a this painting right here. has a satin finish on it. No shine, no glare. You can't see the fan above and this is my preference. So you got lots of options, guys. Best place to go is to the source. Go to the Liquitex. Um, the li best place, take two. Best places go to the source. Go to the Liquitex website go to the Golden website. They have any and all the information that you need there. So I'm going to go ahead and change the camera angle, get down to these two paintings, and we're going to put some varnish on, guys. Thanks for joining me. Okay, guys, once again, this painting has already got its coat of isolation coat down. Once again, don't freak out when you put it down and it has a, a milky appearance to it, that will go away. It scared the heck out of me the first time that I did it. My painting is taped below. It is also resting on four um, two or three ounce cups. I check to make sure that it's level by putting a level down the middle going in this direction and a level going in this direction. So my um, high gloss varnish has already been shaken and I shake it um, very gingerly and then I walk away from it for about 15 minutes. That helps the air bubbles to dissipate. I have my little torch close at hand because one thing really important you need to do is give it a couple of good torches. Um, after you put your coats, your um, coats of varnish down, I apologize, it's early guys, I haven't had my second <laughs> cup of coffee. Um, important to torch it, get rid of those air bubbles because they will stay if you don't and they're no fun. I also have a popsicle stick close by because after the varnish goes down, I run it underneath the, uh, the canvas to remove any of the drippings. And then I usually cover this with a netting, which I will show you. And then I come back about 15 minutes later and I scrape again any of the drippings and I also give it another torch. So. Synthetic, inexpensive, not too thick brush, guys. Um, a thicker or a wider brush is uh, better because then that means that it's less times that you have to uh, you have to swipe across the canvas. All right, guys, let's get rocking and rolling. Now, a lot of people thin their Liquitex varnish. A lot of people use 50% Liquitex varnish to 50% water. Um, if you go to the uh, if you go to the Liquitex website, it, it'll tell you do not dilute it with water. Some do. I've purchased art from some very talented artists who do it that way, and it looked absolutely fine. I prefer to use it straight out of the bottle. Now I always start with a bead along all four sides because the sides are difficult. They're a little bit raised up and if you don't get a good coverage on those sides, it will, uh, it will show. 
And then I apply just enough here and there. You can always apply a little more. Now, another thing that I do is I try to do or take my brush in the direction that the movement of the paint is going. So I'm going to go this way first, and then when I pass over it again, I'm going to go this way. I take my brush, I find a nice little puddle, and I get it nice and moist, and then the first thing I do is my sides. Or the edges, guys. I don't worry about my sides till till um, the end of this. Okay, so I'm going to go left to right. Now pay attention how I hold my brush. It's very flexible in my hand. I apply absolutely no pressure, guys. That will help eliminate any of the brush marks. I start, I don't go over the edge just yet. Oh, so gingerly, guys, here, it's almost like my brush is floating across the canvas. I'm just supporting it. I do not go over the edge yet. <laughs> Same thing here. Make sure you overlap your lines. Do not go over the edge. The reason being is in case I need some of that varnish, it's right here on this side. Sorry guys, I tend to hold my breath when I do this. And when you get to the side, at the top and the bottom, make sure that you have part of your paintbrush hanging over the edge. Okay, now, we still have some varnish right in through here. I can tell just by looking at this that I have pretty much covered most of the, all of this canvas. There's no areas that were missed. So I can now start to eliminate this little puddle that's along here of varnish. I start over the edge now, a very light gingerly drag. and I take it over the edge on that side. Start over the edge and what that does is any of the excess varnish that's on this brush will drip down that side. Overlap. Over the edge. No pressure on that paintbrush. Over the edge. Over the edge, which drags the excess varnish off the paintbrush. Now notice how when I finish my swipe here, I take my paintbrush around <laughs> the canvas because there are drips that will happen. And if you take it across an area you were just in, 
you'll have some drip marks and it's best to handle your varnish as little as you can hanging over the side okay well i'm happy with this now this side and this side is where i dragged my brush over it so this has the majority of the drip lines from the varnish on it so i've got a good amount of varnish on this brush and i didn't drag my brush on this side or this side so i'm going to start with the sides using the varnish that is left on the brush on the side that got the least amount of drips Now we'll do this side. And then we'll spread the drips that are on this side. Now I'm going to run my brush underneath the canvas, or you can use your popsicle stick to gather up any of the drips. Put your brush aside. Now, I'll be able to do one more painting with that brush, but then you need to wash your brush, let it dry out before you use it again. Um, the varnish will set up quite quickly and it will set up in your paintbrush and get it kind of gooby. Good, good torch, guys. As you're torching, also look at your canvas for any dust debris or anything um, that fell from the sky. Now this painting will get one more coat of gloss varnish because the customer wants a glossy finish. But if I wanted a satin finish, the next coat of varnish would be the satin varnish. There you have it. I have a netting over here that I'm going to cover this up with. I get them at Amazon. They're called picnic nettings. In about 15 minutes, I'm gonna come back, scrape the bottom of this canvas for any drips that I might have missed, and we're gonna give it another torch, put the netting on top, walk away from it, and we will not touch it for 24 hours, guys. So the next video that I do, I'm gonna show you this uh, finished varnish piece. Now, I hope that helps. I apologize for my little bit of mumbling. Like I said, it's early morning here and I haven't had my second cup of coffee just yet, but that's where I'm heading, guys. Thanks for being here. I hope you um, got a few tidbits of information. Once again, this is how I do it. Find your own way with it. If you have questions, you can reach out to me or go to the source, Liquitex website, um, golden website to read all about the isolation coat, guys. Thanks for joining me. Hope you have a wonderful day. See you soon.